welcome to Gothic Homemaking Presents, a series of short featurettes intended to inform and entertain you between full episodes of Gothic Homemaking. Now, most episodes of Gothic Homemaking took months and months and months to plan, with me flying all over the world to shoot the footage. But not today's episode. Today's project was born of an unexpected and completely spontaneous stroke of inspiration. Take a look. The other day I was just cruising around when I stumbled into Michael's, the arts and crafts store. There I found these whimsical church-shaped birdhouses. I got a great idea for how to goth it up into something truly sinister. I bet I could improve it too! And that's exactly what I'll do! <laughs> At that moment I said to myself, I bet I could make this birdhouse into a super creepy gothic church. Then I thought, wait a minute, I bet I could make it into a black metal church. METAL! Well, why stop there? Why not make it a black metal church nightlight? And that's how our project began. Behold. Well, the first step to making this thing more gothic was to give it some gothic arches. So I drew some on with a pencil. Then I cut them out using a Dremel tool with a cutting attachment. Now I'm terrible at cutting things, so try not to laugh too hard at my terrible cutting job. It won't matter in the end anyway. Being as this is going to be a nightlight, I drilled some extra holes in the back with a drill. Next, I cut off the little bird perch, as we're not going to need it. To create the illusion of stones, I used plumber's epoxy. Plumber's epoxy is a two-part putty. You simply knead it together, and in five minutes, it becomes hard as a rock. What better way to create fake stones? Just ball up small pieces and press them right into the facade. Eventually, I had this. The reason for the two-tone rocks is because I ran out of Propoxy 20 and I used another brand for the rest. Next, it was time to shingle the roof. Now, I could have used popsicle sticks for this, but they always look to me like you're making some kind of third grade arts and crafts project. I much prefer the thinner wooden stirrers they have at Starbucks. And you can get these from, I don't know, I guess wherever Starbucks gets theirs. I attached them to the model with my industrial glue gun, but really any glue gun will do. Just lay down a line of hot glue and place the stirrer down so that it overlaps with the one beneath it. Once the roof was covered, I trimmed the excess with a Dremel tool. And then I sanded the edge with a sanding attachment. Unfortunately, the result looks a bit like wood siding. In order to create the look of shingles, I carved them into the wood with a carving attachment on the Dremel tool. And voila! Now my church has shingles, just like Orville. Anyway, next it was time for the steeple. I've been collecting miniature gargoyles for a cemetery model I hope to make someday. I think this little guy would be perfect to watch over our black metal church. I affixed him to the model using some plumber's epoxy. And then with the plumber's epoxy, I gave the chimney the same stone treatment. For ornamental roof cresting, I bought these faux iron gates from a dollhouse supply store and cut them to size. I glued those on with some Loctite glue. It's starting to get spooky up here. I also cut some gates for the base of the church, but we'll get back to that later. I felt the church doors were a little too plain, but I have a technique to make them look like decrepit old metal. But to ensure I don't make the whole church look like decrepit old metal, I masked it off with some tin foil. If you allow hot glue to drip from a great height, it will make squiggly little shapes like these. Pretty gnarly, huh? And there you have it but I think we can do better than those dork knobs. So it was off to Toho Shoji, my favorite jewelry supply store in New York City, to find some details for our model. From their vast collection of beads and charms, I found these crosses and these locks. And for our doorknobs, these skulls. Back at the studio, I trimmed down the skulls. I glued the skulls on with some Zappa Gap and cemented them in place with Spray Kicker. After doing the same with the locks, I ended up with this. Next, I attached the crosses the same way.
it was really coming together. For the ground surrounding the church, I mixed up some plumber's epoxy, applied it to the base, and gave it some texture with a sharpened stick. Finally, there came my favorite part of any project. I painted the whole thing black. Now that's much better. To give the model some dimension, I mixed up some white and black paint, and with an almost dry sponge, I applied the paint to the facade. The crevices stay dark, and the raised areas become lighter. I really love this technique. It's kind of like lighting with paint. I used a similar technique on the doors, dry brushing a mixture of black paint and silver brush and leaf. And here is the black metal church fully painted. Now this is a nightlight after all, and since the color scheme in the lair is black, gray, and purple, we want to make sure that this thing gives off an eerie purple glow. So I took a stroll down to the set shop in New York City and bought some purple lighting gels. I cut the gels to size and glued them into the windows with some paper cement. And this is how you transform a boring old birdhouse into a black metal church nightlight. But being that it's a nightlight, it's not really complete until you light it up. And what's the best way to light up a black metal church? Are you crazy? What's wrong with you, fool? I worked hard on this. Idiot. There are various ways to light up our black metal church nightlight. For instance, these small flickering lights are battery operated. They give off a really nice flickering glow. You can also find these extremely bright battery operated lights at Michael's. Throw a few of these in your church and it's really gonna glow. And if you don't wanna deal with batteries at all, just buy yourself a night light, attach it to an extension cord, and stick it into the back of the church. It's really, really hard to get a shot of this thing in the dark, but I assure you it looks absolutely spectacular. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching the Black Metal Church Nightlight Project. I can promise you that if you make one, you will fill the velvet darkness of the blackest night with a burning light, and it'll be like a guiding star. What I can promise you is that it'll keep away the ghouls or the goblins or that thing under your bed or your annoying roommates. Cállate la boca! See you next time. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe so that you'll never miss another Gothic homemaking video. Full episodes of Gothic Homemaking can be seen right here on The Lair of Voltaire.